Welcome to my Commodore 64 Games Memories. This is where I look at old games and some of the technical details behind them. Let's get into it. Today we have IK Plus, otherwise known as International Karate Plus, published in 1987 by System 3, re-released by the Hit Squad. The producer was Jonathan Dean, the coder was Archer McLean, and also the graphics was by Archer McLean, and the title screen was by Paul Doherty. The musician was Rob Hubbard. Just how did this game render such large, varied animations? Well, we're looking at the game in the Commodore 64 debugger, and we can see in this full screen view that we have what looks like two sprite grids, one for each of the players, the, the white player and the red player in this regard, and then we have what looks like a character screen being used for the blue player. The blue player is not highlighted with any red bounding boxes indicating that it's using characters. In addition to the two sprite grids for the white and the red player here, we can also see some multiplexed sprites in the middle, so the birds that fly across the screen, the reflection of the sun in the water, and the ripples in the water. The teacher that comes up in the background with the message, with the uh, black and white, well, the, yeah, black and white speech bubble, uh, that's also characters. The advantage of having two sprite grids for the white and the red player, and then the blue player as characters is that the sprite grids do not need any masking when they're being updated as also the, the sprite, the character based player also doesn't need any masking because the sprites and the characters will all mask properly with each other in hardware. Let's look at this in ICU 64 so we can understand a little bit more about the graphical layout in memory. Oh, just before we do that, it's worth pointing out here that the score panel that comes up is also character based and one of the player characters is on the left hand side there holding up the sign. But we still have the two sprite grid based characters on screen at the same time. In this debug mode where I can move the targeting cursor up and down and I can pause the frame as well, then moving the targeting cursor around, we can see where there are going to be uh, sprite register updates. You can see at this particular point in time where the sprite register updates are performed and we can see the, the red bounding boxes highlighting those portions of the characters being drawn there. If I move the targeting cursor along, we can see where it's doing store into the D00 zero registers there which are the sprite uh, y position registers in the vic and then shortly afterwards the sprite frame pointers are being stored into their hogret big line now most of those stores occur uh, where the just before the sprite actually needs it for display purposes and we can see how those red boxes which show the sprites on the screen are being moved down as I move the targeting cursor down to follow the raster as it progresses down the screen. This view in C64 Debug GUI is very useful for understanding exactly which hardware writes are going on at what time. So let's look into ICU64 now. I've already opened a few debug windows in ICU64. This is showing currently the text screens and then this memory view here shows that there is actually quite a lot of uh, reading and writing going on and execution as well. Let's move that out of the way. So we can see a lot of reading going on where there's all, all of those green colored reads in the memory view. The yellow is writing and then the blue, which is dark blue, is execution. 
in the top right hand corner here I'm just scrolling through the memory and looking for the text screens and also the character set which is used for the bottom part of the screen there. We can definitely confirm now that the score panel and the white player character or the white robed player character on the left hand side holding up the sign is actually character based. At the top of the screen we can confirm obviously that it's using a bitmap screen. Now what's interesting to note is that the bitmap screen and also the character based graphics and also the sprite based graphics are all using the same bank which is a little bit unusual. We can see in the text screen graphics map debug view there in the top right hand corner that we have two double buffered partial screens used for the in this case it is the blue middle character that's in the middle of their somersault or whatever it is that they're doing and then the red and the white robed characters are displayed in the sprites display in the bottom right hand corner there it looks like the sprites display is also double buffered we seem to have uh, basically two double buffered sprite grids and also two double buffered character set updates and double buffered screens this is not a surprise because even though the characters and the sprites don't need to have any masking going on it still takes a few frames to actually render everything we can see here when we've got five characters on the screen going through those dance moves when I press pause during a match we can see that actually there are three uh, duplicate uh, characters being displayed in the double buffered character screen data here if I switch back to the to the uh, to the wrong characters for this view we can actually see that consistently the same range of characters are used for each of the double buffered screens so it's using one character set but it seems to be using the top half and the bottom half of a character set we can see that the three copies of the characters use the same character identification number so the head is O, P, Q and R with reverse video and it's duplicated three times across the screen. Uh, the sprite duplication of course won't really work because the sprite grid is already 3x3 three three, uh, it was 3x3 three three sprite grid, right? Uh, so there aren't any uh, available sprites to use um, any more horizontal multiplexing there there isn't any option because there is a, a row limit of eight hardware sprites in the Commodore 64. So advancing the frame, I've, I've paused the emulation and advancing the frame, we can see that it takes between uh, two and three and four frames to actually render all of the information, which is quite a long time, right? We can see that the last few characters of the uh, character set that's used for the player character uh, has some static text in there and that's used for the score display on the high score table when it's actually displayed on the screen. So this game was one of my favourites of course when I was growing up uh, it left a great impression on me and that's because it wasn't just because of the music it wasn't just because of the playability or the graphics um, it also had some really nice uh, sampled sound effects which go on at the same time during gameplay during this uh, really quite good music of course the music is excellent uh, but I think the sound effects also really help make it as well and of course the two player mode was also very enjoyable. I used to play this game with my brother quite often. I also enjoyed learning about the cheat codes that were in this game. There were several actually, you could make their trousers fall down and stuff like that, which obviously as a much younger child um, I found quite hilarious. But I, I think it's a nice little design touch. So what I would really like to do is that I'd like to try and understand the draw routine for this in a little bit more technical detail. So let's start up the debugger in ICU64 by uh, opening up the integrated monitor and then let's see if we can actually find 
what's going on. I want to put a watch point for this area of the screen here that I'm highlighting for the uh, player character, for the character base uh, player character draw. And I want to exclude obviously the sprite pointers, which are the last eight bytes of the screen memory. So I'm going to put a ranged breakpoint for 6P, 6B00 to 6BF0 to try and uh, find the character draw. Uh, this routine looks like it's clearing with a consistent character which is loaded in the accumulator and it looks like it's doing an optimized uh, clear there or rather a semi-optimized clear for just the area of the screen that it's interested in clearing. The idea being that we trace back uh, down through if it's using subroutines back down through the stack. Of course I made a typo there by uh, deleting the breakpoint uh, just and then continuing the execution which was the wrong way around to doing it. There we go. So let's go back out from that subroutine and here we have uh, a value being loaded and then stored into uh, the screen memory and we can see actually the the partially drawn character uh, the head is floating in midair in the bottom left hand screen of the uh, text screens and graphics map window in the top right hand corner of the screen there we can see it's in the middle of drawing the player character so I think we can say that we're in roughly the right position if I scroll up through the routine, it looks like this is the entry point because it's just after an RTS instruction. The annoying thing about this disassembly window is that it keeps on resetting its view when you type commands into the monitor. Anyway, this is the looks like it's the entry point. And if I advance for every single time it hits this breakpoint, you could see that it was rendering a player character either in the left or the right hand side at the debug graphics map, which is useful to know. Now I'm looking for uh, significant entry points into this draw code here. It looks like uh, the registers are all the same. Uh, so it doesn't, what I'm trying to do is that I'm trying to find the, uh, the draw routine to the extent that I can actually tell it to draw different player characters with different animation frames just to try and understand the animation draw routine a little bit more. So I stepped out of that routine and then looked at the parent routine that was being called. We get to this stage of the draw routine where advancing each frame would show us that the character base player character was being drawn in alternating screen banks. And that's at 1524 in the memory. So let's step line by line. We'll step over this JSR, so, so we'll run the whole routine, and we can see that it's starting to draw the characters in the other off-screen buffer. It then fills in the character set definitions to, to match those draw, newly drawn characters in the screen data itself. So I think we can safely say that uh, the routine at 864 is some kind of like screen character draw and the routine at 85E is the corresponding character set update. Every time I press X it's allowing the game to execute until it hits this breakpoint at 1524 again. This is why the the emulator's debugger is really very, very useful because it allows fine control over breakpoints without worrying about uh, corrupting memory or anything like that. And of course the view in ICU64 debugger with all of this extra graphics map data and also the sprites uh, debug view as well uh, is very powerful, very, very useful indeed. So let's just add some uh, labels for some of the memory addresses for these subroutines, what I think they are, just so that we don't forget. 
uh, that's 864. I forgot to put a period or a full stop. There we go. So that is drawing the screen characters and then the routine after it is updating the character set data. Now this only updates uh, the character based player character. There are going to be different routines for the two uh, sprite updates because uh, sprite data is formatted differently to the character based data. The source data is almost certainly the same. In other words, the, the, the actual source graphics data is almost certainly the same. It's just that the byte layout in terms of characters and sprites is actually very, very different. But we can see as I advance one frame hitting each breakpoint at, at a time, we can see where the character-based draw goes on and we can see how it's double buffering the screen. Let's change the graphics map from a bitmap to a character set view. Look in the third bank, which starts at 8000 in hex, and we can see all of this graphical data for what obviously are parts of the uh, people, right? The, the player characters. Now, I'm just guessing here, but um, the memory character, the MC command that I'm using looks at memory based characters so I'm just going to do a ranged load watch point here and we can see what looks like uh, uh, an unrolled semi unrolled um, sprite update because I think this looks like it's converting what looks like character based graphical data into uh, sprite based graphical data. That's what it looks like at the initial guess anyway, uh, because the Y register at 3DE4, 3DE8, 3DEC is being incremented by 1 each time. Uh, so it's going at 0, 1, 3, 2, 6, 3, 9, 4. This pattern seems to make me think that it's taking character oriented data and swizzling it around, if you like, to sprite based graphical data. Uh, if we're assuming that that's uh, correct, then this routine is going to uh, eventually return back to a subroutine which is going to be calling the sprite graphical data updates. And here we are, we're actually just above the draw screen characters and draw character set routine but we can scroll up a little bit more and we can see that there are two copies of calling uh, the routine at 870 but with different entry points. This very much tells me that, that those are the two entry points or they were the two entry points for the sprite based plot. Now I'm just investigating these uh, routines here which update, or rather which read values from some of the zero page registers. Just trying to understand what the zero page registers are doing. I'm looking, f I can see that the X register here for that routine actually goes 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2, and it seems to correspond to drawing each of the player characters. And I can see that the X register going from 0 to 1 to 2 is indexing into 6B, it's indexing into uh, zero. Well, it's not. It's uh, indexing into zero one D and seven E zero zero. But that's with Y, not with X. But it seems to be that six B has some important data, which is being fed into these three different uh, character draws, the, the player character draws, and it seems to be a common routine between the player character draw for the character set version and also for the two sprite versions as well. I think that's why the X register was cycling through between 0, 1 and 2. That would be the most likely logical explanation at that particular point in time. 
it's just a hypothesis, but uh, these are the kind of assumptions that you have to try and make when you're trying to understand somebody else's code. If I look back through the CPU execution history, I can see that this routine at 401D is actually getting its um, 0, 1, or 2 x value from the 68 0 page register. So I'm going to have a little look at these 0 page registers here. And I can see that it's reading uh, 6b, 6c, 6d, and then 6e, 6f, and 70, you see, uh, also contain what looks like a three similar values. What I mean by similar is that they're not the same value, but they seem to be updating in 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 synchronization with each other, depending on, on what's visible on the screen at, at that particular point in time. I'm going to fill the data at uh, 6b with some zeros. So note where the uh, player characters are being drawn on the screen at the moment. Then let's advance the routine and load. look, the char player characters have all moved around. That's interesting to note. It means that updating the values in 6b onwards has certainly caused the player characters to move around. There needs to be some more experimentation with this to really understand what they do, though. Filling it with 0 had a weird effect, so let's change it to be 22. Uh, for each of these byte values, and then let's see what happens with the rendered positions. Oh look, all three characters uh, look like they're rendered on top of each other. Only the red one is visible now. Let's spread them out by about 20 pit. There we go. Value of 20 actually spreads them out uh, so that all three player characters are now evenly spaced. Note the animation frames are actually the same as well, which is interesting to note. Just pondering what this means, rearranging the windows a little bit to make it a little bit more visible. But these do seem to be X positions, don't they? Um, probably X positions multiplied by 2 because it's a multicolor based uh, character display. It does look like it's X positions. If I change one uh, value to be 43, note probably the middle character, see if it moves, it does, it moves one pixel when I advance to the next breakpoint. If I change it to be 53, it should move uh, 16 or 32 pixels to the right. Let's put my mouse pointer on their sideburn. Oh look, there we go, it's moved quite an appreciable distance across. Mm. Interesting. Okay, so I think we can say that those are x positions. Changing that value didn't seem to do anything at this particular point. In. Hmm, well, the white player character seemed to flip around, which is interesting. Just experimenting with different values in this 6e0 page memory range and stepping through this draw routine, stepping over each subroutine, I can see that it returns back to this, what looks like, like a mainline loop perhaps, or a higher level draw loop. But I can see that the actual routine that gets stepped into is one, or jump JSR into, rather than jump on subroutine, is actually at 150B which then calls into the draw screen Charles draw character set routine. So I think 150B here is actually a better place to put a breakpoint for all three character draws. I can see that the values 0, 1, and 2 are being stored into hex location 68 in 0 page. So initializing the memory like this and then pressing X will render one frame. So if I want to get both frames populated into memory to basically populate both of the double buffered images, then I need to run the routine with the same memory initialization twice, which is okay. I don't mind doing that. 
So I thought I'd have a look at the start of the game again and I'm, I've stopped in the monitor again at this introduction point in the game where the characters bow to each other and I'm going to put a breakpoint at 150B which is that routine here and if you have a look at the memory look 6B contains three consecutive numbers and 7, 1 has 0, 1 and 1 which seems to correspond to uh, the the way that the characters are facing look because one's facing right and two are facing left zero one one so I'm pretty sure now that memory location 6e is the X position or pos X label now if I put 2 20 40 and 60 as hex values into 6e which is the X position then we can see here that the characters have moved after I render a frame. So that really does point to something interesting with the other two values. So I think if I change what's in 6b perhaps or let's let's try 7 1 and 7 2 and 7 3 and look at the way that the characters are facing now and then when I run the routine and then I run the routine again look they're all facing the same way. I need to run the routine twice because of the double buffered display, which is fair enough. It looks like that, that 7172 and 73 are flip X. Now, because all three animation frames are the same, I'm pretty much certain now that 6B, 6C and 6D are the actual animation frames for the characters, but we need to really properly test that. Just adding a note for the people who don't have audio switched on that I'm running this twice because of the double buffer. So let's put some different numbers into 6B, 6C and 6D. We're going to put it back to the previous frame and we're going to run this twice and look, oh great, they're standing up again which was the previous uh, value for when they were starting to bow, but they hadn't, hadn't actually bowed to each other yet. So this is important. If, say, for example, you wanted to reverse engineer this game and you wanted to try and extract all of the animation frames, one of the easier ways of extracting all of the animation frames would be to add code to call this routine and then after the routine has been called to then take a screenshot or to save the data from the Commodore 64's memory or use the monitor commands and use the remote monitor to automate capturing all of this data by just saving the memory using the monitor save memory commands which you can do all sorts of different things because we have a very good machine code monitor. You'll notice that now I put 0, 1 and 2, we have uh, individual frames from what looks like the walking cycle, right? So I'm looking for some free memory now, memory which isn't being executed or read or stored to. This dark place in memory here, <clears throat> excuse me, this dark place in memory here doesn't seem to have uh, anything being executed in it. So that's at 4500 in hex. I just zoomed in to the memory debug view there to uh, have a look what the memory address was. So let's assemble some debug code. Uh, the code that I intend to assemble is just going to increment uh, some of the frame uh, pointer or frame numbers in that zero page memory location at 6b, 6c and 6d. We'll increment 6b first of all I think. And I'm going to clamp uh, the range of numbers in 6b by a suitable amount. So I'm just guessing here but I'm going to and it say for example with 1f. Uh, so that's going to be uh, 0 to 31 in decimal uh, animation frames. I don't want to stop the interrupts because the interrupts are responsible for rendering the sprite grid, so I want the sprite grids to be visible. And now I'm going to go to that routine, 
just put a breakpoint there just to make sure that the routine really does work and it does seem to be working. That's the previous breakpoint that I had in the draw routine. So if I step out and then there we go, it's back to the jump for 4500. Zero, zero. So if I run it through again, we can see that it's doing calculation. And we can see in the right hand graphics map debug view there in the sprites view that it is updating the sprites for the first player, player zero or player character zero. If I let it run through, then we can see that the sprites are rapidly updating uh, the animation frames uh, for the player character. Now the sprites aren't going to show that on the screen because it's double, it's double buffered and the ones that are being rendered are the on-screen sprite information, uh, sprite definitions, and then the ones that are being updated in the graphics map view that you can see in the debug window there are the off-screen ones, and there's no screen buffer swap or anything like that going on because I'm just telling it to render new sprite frames. So I'm going to make it more visible now by changing it to 6D as opposed to 6B. And now we can see that the character off-screen view is being updated with all of the animation frames. So there we go, that's animation frames 0 to 31. It's updating quite quickly and it's not updating uh, synchronized to the, uh, to the raster or to the screen refresh, of course, because it's a debug graphics map view. Let's change the clamp value to be, I don't know, 7F, which is 0 uh, to 127. Ah, look, we can see that some of the... Okay, so that it, it's not quite 0 to 127 um, in decimal animation frames because we can see that it's probably looping through some uninitialized or or just, you know, unexpected data in the lookup tables and it's doing quite a lot of weird... Uh, character copies and stuff like that for the later animation frames. But we know now that it's it's some number of animation frames between, say, for, for example, 32 and 128 in decimal. Uh, I'm not going to really put too much time and effort into deducing how many animation frames there are. Uh, that's left as an exercise for the reader, if you like. But there we go. That's the uh, animation calculation routine reverse engineered and understood. If you like these kind of uh, deep technical dives into Commodore 64 retro games, then please do consider liking or subscribing to this channel. And if you really like the work that I do, then a super thanks is always very much appreciated. Thank you very much for watching. Take care, have a great day, wherever you are.